Vultures really irritate cheetahs. For a start, a column of vultures plummeting down to the kill is likely to attract lions or hyenas who will come on the run to steal it. So vultures usually signal the beginning of the end of the cheetah's meal. But there is also something about the birds themselves, the shuffling and shameless way in which they move in and just stare. It must be a bit like making a personal call in the public phone box while a dozen people tap and press their noses on the glass. The cheetah's nerve breaks. A jackal is already attracted. Hyenas are probably on the way. It's time to go. Because the cheetah is so easy to chase away, it has to kill at least twice as often as the similar-sized leopard, which is so efficient at storing its prey. The cheetah is a competent hunter, but a very poor utilizer of the animals it kills. Vulnerable and relatively frail, a cheetah cannot risk fighting over its kill. A bite in a leg or foot could destroy its hunting ability and mean death from starvation. <coughs> Even for this group of five, defending their kill is simply not worth the risks involved. It is easier and much safer to go and catch another gazelle rather than face the male baboon's fearsome teeth. Baboons are very fond of meat and will hunt and kill newborn gazelles when they can. They are more than a match for the cheetah and they flash their great canines in a mixture of fear and aggression. These baboons are putting on the same show for a leopard. And here, perhaps, is the best illustration of the difference in the essential spirit of these two cats. With odds of five to two in their favour, the cheetahs gave up. At about forty to one against, the leopard keeps moving in. She is forced to back down, but she's made her point. The baboons move out and her cubs, hidden among the rocks, are safe once more. With mother watching over them from above, the cubs can explore. A heavy rainstorm has brought out a terrapin who's been buried for several months underground to avoid the dry season. The terrapin is very hungry. He was disturbed while looking for his first meal and this is more fun than he needs right at this moment. But the terrapin will be okay. He smells so bad that the leopard won't eat him, or even play with him for very long. Toys of this sort are essential to a growing predator. They enable the youngsters to practice stalking and pouncing, and to polish the skills they will need for more serious matters when they're older. To help her young develop in this way, a female will often bring them something to chase.
With great gentleness, she picks up her baby Tommy, whose mother watches helplessly. The leopard is entranced with the fawn. She keeps her claws in, and all her moves are playful. But she's in a quandary. The cubs are some distance away, and before she can work out how to move the fawn without hurting it, another player enters the game. A lion has seen the activity and wonders what's happening. The long grass hides the fawn, but the leopard's behavior is strange. Perhaps there's an easy meal to be had. The leopard heads back for the trees. The fawn is shaken, but not scarred. And the lion still hasn't figured out what was going on.